thought he was the man to lead us through the long night. But I was wrong. Do you like games, little man? You would spill blood in this holy place. The gods won't mind. They spill more blood than the rest of us combined. Who are you? No one. The girl has been given a second chance. There will not be a third. It's all I think about. What was taken from me. I know what happens. There's no hiding from this. We have to fight. Stand at the head of our army where you belong. Show them what Lannisters are. What we do to our enemies. The real war is between the living and the dead. And make no mistake, the dead are coming. Dragons do not do well in captivity. How do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. <laughs> Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. New Game of Thrones trailer, so let's break it down. We drink and we know things. It's what we do. If you didn't know they screened the first episode at the premiere last night, I haven't seen any actual spoilers, but I will talk a little bit about what happened and what people were talking about. But yes, careful for spoilers for everything that's happened on the show so far. Most of what's in this trailer is self-explanatory, but we're also going to do a little bit of speculation too. So here we go. The opening narration over this scene that we've actually seen a lot of, this scene of them trying to get to Jon Snow's body, is Tormund Giant's Bane. I thought he was the man to get us through the long night. I was wrong. They're all just trying to figure out what to do now that everything's gone sideways, or at least it seems like it's gone sideways. We don't know how much of this footage is from later in the season, but I'm guessing that most of this is from the first couple of episodes. We move to Marine, Tyrion learning to deal with the local populace. Do you like games, little man? It looks like the old masters are going to try and retake Marine now that Daenerys is gone. They feel like Drogon is gone, but the dragons are still down in the pit. So I love the way Tyrion doesn't so much come out and say it, but he says, dragons don't do well in captivity. How do you know that? I drink and I know things. It's what I do. So I don't think he's outright getting Quentin Martell's storyline from the books, if you have read the books. If you haven't, don't worry, they're not doing that character. I feel like he's safe here, even though the trailer makes it look like he gets roasted. Drogon we see flying over via Stothrock. So whatever's happening in Marine, it seems like Tyrion and Daenerys' small council are going to be on their own, with maybe the help of this new red woman. As much as the term makes you think of Melisandre, and I know a lot of people are like, what about Lyanna Stark if they're doing Tower of Joy? Maybe she's the red woman lying in a red pool of blood. I also think the really big hat tip to the red woman title is this red woman. Jamie going directly against the High Sparrow, just suggesting he's not afraid to reenact his Kingslayer moment. And actually, you may have noticed the transitions between scenes sounds like an army getting pumped up for war. That's kind of the idea with the way they cut this trailer and the way they plotted the episodes out. Each season of Game of Thrones, the episodes thematically tend to flow from what the narrative is. So like when we start out in episode one, Sansa and Reek are still on the run. They're still scrambling. They find their footing. Then Sansa starts to build her war engine to take back all that was taken from her. So all over the place, not just in the north, they're all ramping up for a big crazy war. It's just in King's Landing, this is going to be a war of the faith. I like that they cut this brand scene of him underneath the weirwood with the Arya scene and Jack and saying, who are you? Like Bran is slowly discovering who he is as the Green Seer. He's going to have all kinds of crazy powers. It is going to look spectacular. So from the looks of it, when we see him here, this is what his body looks like. But his mind will be traveling all over the place. That's why we see him standing out in broad daylight next to this white walker. The last time we saw him, the three-eyed raven said, you'll never walk again, but you will fly. Arya also continuing her evolution. I love Faye Marseille here just playing the game of faces with herself, just slapping the shit out of her. 
This Daenerys scene of her being stripped of her clothing by the Dothraki might remind you of her in season one. Like she's almost being reduced back to the point where she was at in season one before she had amassed this army, before she had her dragons, but she still does have her dragons. So I'll be really interested to see how she deals with this the second time around. Amongst the Dothraki, Cal Jacko is kind of like the new Cal Drogo. So she might be forced to marry him here. We really don't have enough context, but this was the same thing that happened to Daenerys on her original wedding night to Cal Drogo. More Jack and Hagar voiceover about Arya getting a second chance, better make the most of it, cut to Sansa Stark making the most of her second chance amassing an army. Look at what she's wearing. She has this awesome Stark sigil on her clothing, so clearly she's landed on her feet with Stark loyalists. We don't really see the banners yet, but that actually comes later in the trailer. When she talks about what was taken from her, they have several flashbacks to some of the big Stark-related WTFs, Ramsay, The Red Wedding, I wonder if these scenes are actually in the season or if they just put this in here for the purposes of the trailer. Dan and Dave were always kind of thumbs down when it came to flashbacks, but they relented when it came to the Cersei flashback. We have the brand flashbacks, so it is totally possible that we could flash back to the Red Wedding. We don't have a lot of context for Littlefinger here, but I'm assuming he's going to appear during Sansa's storyline. But the look on his face makes it look like he's awaiting judgment, like someone's going to pass sentence on him. What a coincidence that they then cut to a man condemned to die by his disease, the grayscale. Poor Sir Jorah, I know what's gonna happen. He's definitely going to die eventually, but I think it's gonna be a situation where as he gets closer to death, he just gets more and more heroic, but he's still gonna die. Like there's a ticking clock on his life now. We finally see Loras and Marjorie again, still at the mercy of the faith. I know a lot of people were wondering where Loras was. Now confirmed, still in prison, awaiting judgment. And then we get some more context for what's going on with Ser Davos that looks like he's going to play a huge part in the battle against the Boltons, the Battle of the North. There's a traditional Stark banner flying behind him, so it looks like he is going to be a leader of Sansa's army. Survey the battlefield, a bunch of flayed men, looks like they're getting ready to charge the field. Cut to Tyrion and Varys, surveying their battlefield with this new red woman. I love the juxtaposition of scenes here, where it's like everyone is going to be fighting their battle, and the trailer is slowly ramping up from people amassing their armies, then charging the field. Cersei voiceover juxtaposed with the Euron Greyjoy scene. He's on the bridge here. I think this is going to be a moment from the books where he slowly takes control of the Ironborn. Cersei is talking about Jaime taking control of their army, which is somewhat of a book thing, but it's like way back from book four. So they're, they're looping back around to grab some Jaime stuff, but they're still changing a lot from the books. As he rides here through the Lannister army, he's wearing Lannister armor. He's not wearing his Kingsguard armor anymore. So maybe Cersei discharges him. That just remains to be seen. He's going to be doing things that are a little bit closer to book four Jaime. That was why a lot of people were up in arms when he went down to Dorne in season five. They felt like he was going to be doing his book four stuff. So now they've looped back around and I'll actually connect this to a later Brienne scene. We move to another Tower of Joy flashback. Now this isn't confirmed Arthur Dane, so don't assume that this is him. It's just a Targaryen guard fighting someone in northern armor. Now this could be Ned Stark versus Arthur Dane. Remains to be seen, but I'm guessing not so much because this Targaryen looks like he slays this northern person, and that is not the way that Ned Stark versus Arthur Dane went down in the books. Cersei looks like she's going to be encouraging Tommen to become more of a leader, show them what Lannisters are. Now remember, the voiceover is disconnected from the scenes in this trailer, so her voiceover is her speaking to another character from a totally different scene than from this Tommen scene. But the actor who plays Tommen did say that he's excited to show people that Tommen really does have a pair, like he's really going to try and step up this season. But this shadow actually looks like Jaime slaying the Mad King, so I'll be really interested to see if they flash back to that. On the approach, it's just someone walking up to the High Sparrow. So taking the literal context, it seems like someone's going to try and assassinate the High Sparrow. But when you look at the shadow that's getting stabbed up here, the head looks nothing like the head of the High Sparrow. So just prepare to freak out for Mad King flashback. When you look at the stonework in the background here too, this really does look like the inside of the Red Keep. It has really high ceilings. It doesn't look anything like this small room underneath Baylor's set. More Ironborn with Yara Greyjoy. Tyrell army marching in behind Jaime to Baylor's set, looking like they're going to try and take Marjorie and Loras by force. Then we get the Davos hat tip to the Night's King's army. We see the Night's King, who actually looks like he's been recast. It's the same character from Hardhome, but it looks like a different actor is in the makeup. These are the three White Walkers or just normal White Walkers. When Davos says the dead are coming, look at the banner behind him. That is a House Mormont sigil, so it looks like he goes to get help from that young lady Mormon. Remember that funny Stannis joke where he was asking for men for his army and he got this really funny reply from the leader of House Mormont who was like a 10 year old girl. It was basically giving him the finger. There's only one true Lord of the North. So I'm gonna cross my fingers here and hope that Davos is talking to a 10 year old girl in this scene. 
and boom, fire is lit. So White Walkers are just destroying stuff. They're walking through fire here. Really hard to tell who they're attacking. They could be marching on the wall. They could be marching on somewhere else near the wall. They've almost taken everywhere there is to take in the north, with the exception of the place that Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven are holed up underneath that weirwood. So really like two big directions they could go. They could go for Bran and the Three-Eyed Raven, knowing that they're very powerful, or they could head straight for the wall. Samwell and Gilly still on that ship on their way to Old Town. Three-Eyed Raven, after what looks like the conclusion of the Tower of Joy flashback, like you see all these dead bodies in the background. More Arya training montage, more Sansa freaking out. So this is like pitch battle, like people are now charging the field. So towards the middle of the season is probably when shit goes real crazy. Really hoping that Sansa has Ramsay flayed by the end of the season. Not confirmed, you know, Ramsay's one of those people that they could choose to keep around for a long time. Joffrey lasted a little bit longer than three seasons, so it remains to be seen how long Ramsay's going to be around. But the longer he's around and the more terrible things that he does, the bigger the payoff when he finally does go down. But what sweet justice would it be to have him flayed just like the Bolton flayed man? Look at where Brienne and Podrick are. That is a Tully banner, so I'm wondering if they make it to River Run. There are a lot of associated things that are happening in the Riverlands that are really important. So we'll probably see Blackfish, and really interesting thing here, Podrick looks like he is with this Lannister army that Jamie was amassing earlier in the trailer. So if you're really big fans of Brienne and Jamie, it looks like we're going to see them again. Cannot wait to see if there's any interaction with what's going on with Sansa's storyline, because she seems like she's going to be localized to the north. It seems like this Riverlands plot is going to be independent of that. 1-1, one, one, charging the gated castle black. Looks like he is going to wreck some of the Night's Watch. Mira is back. I love this oh shit look on her face. Like she's still under the weirwood and sees something crazy. And they wipe the blood and we see dragon fire. What does that remind you of? The motto of House Targaryen is fire and blood. So thematically it works with that and it kind of works with what's going on in the season. Lots of blood is going to be spilled. Lots of people are going to die in so many spectacular ways. It's going to be so awesome. So let me know in the comments below. What is your favorite thing about this trailer? Just the idea of the White Walkers marching, the idea that all these armies are going to be going up against each other. Some of the plot lines are straight out of the book, so we can talk about that when we get to those episodes. Remember, things slowly ramp up, then they get crazy, probably around the middle of the season. So we also have to talk about the stuff that is not in this trailer. Obviously, they're avoiding Jon Snow. There were a lot of people at the premiere who have not read the books that weren't were talking about resurrection or anything crazy like that. They're like, well, he's still dead, making it sound like they thought because he was dead that he's not coming back. There's a lot of things that people aren't saying. Like, you see a lot of articles where people are like, well, it looks like Jon Snow's dead. I guess that's that. And it's hard to tell if they're writing articles like that just to be clicky. Just, you know, so people are like, no, he can't be dead. Or if they really haven't read the books and they don't know anything about resurrection on Game of Thrones. But I'll just tell you guys, you can't resurrect a body that's still alive. He has to die before he can be resurrected. In episode four is longer than all the other episodes of Game of Thrones this season. So something special is happening in episode four. That could be a number of different things, but don't be surprised when we pick up in the first couple of episodes and Jon Snow stays dead. But remember, we see Davos all over the place in this trailer. We do not see Melisandre all over the place. So whatever's gonna happen, it looks like she's going to be staying pretty close to Jon Snow's body. But more really good news, new round of the giveaway starts now. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber, leave a comment on this video. It's just a $20 Amazon gift card because there's still a couple things that are on break this week. I should have plenty of time to do a Q&A, so I'll just announce the winner whenever I post that. There was so much stuff that happened yesterday. Just in case you missed it, you can click here for my Suicide Squad trailer breakdown, and you can click here for all my Game of Thrones trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.